Hi, welcome to The Throttle Cable, I'm Rob. Uh, today I'm gonna to be looking at a little speaker upgrade on the 996, so if that interests you, follow along. So if you're here, I'm gonna assume you've got a 996, 986, maybe a 997, you're still welcome. Um, you're probably familiar that the speakers that come inside the Porsche, they're not that great. They're, they're kind of little paper-based Nokia speakers. Um, and I'm sure they were great for the time, but after 25 years, they're not very pleasant. They distort any significant volume and yeah, they're a bit pants. So I'm going to be changing them out. So it's the two speakers that sit on top of the dash and the two that sit behind you in the rear cards. Um, essentially, there's two methods to do this. The, the first way of doing it is to take out your old speaker. You, you cut up the speaker and you retain the, the carrier, the basket of the speaker, and you glue your new ones into that and then you can mount them in. Um, I'm not gonna do that. There's a, there's a great video by a chap called Martin Hill, and I'm gonna put a link in the description if you wanna have a look at that method, uh, and, and you wanna get involved with cutting up the speakers and, and you know, sorting out your own solution. The second method is you get some custom-made speaker baskets, and essentially you just screw everything together, you get some adapters, and it's all plug and play. That sounds like my kind of solution. It's a doddle, or it should be, and um, if you've got all the components to hand, it shouldn't take very long, famous last words. So the method I'm taking, Chuck Super Paulie is his, his handle. He sells on eBay and uh, he gives you speaker baskets, cradles, whatever, carriers. I don't know what you describe it as. But anyway, the speaker mounts to get them inside the, uh, the grills we've got there. Um, the second thing I've got, I've got these adapters which will adapt a, a, if you like, a Volkswagen type connector which sits inside the car to your, your, your normal speakers, your aftermarket speakers. And again, the tried and tested method of some Alpine SPG 10C2 speakers, two sets obviously, the front and rear, which are gonna be producing the sound. So we'll take a quick look at those and then we can get started trying to swap them in and out. The, the only uh, caveat I'm gonna give is I've made it a lot harder for myself by putting a roll cage and fixed bucket seats in the back of the car. Uh, the back should be a doddle. Might not be quite such a doddle anymore, but we'll try. I can slot myself in there somehow and get this done. So let's have a look. Right, let's have a look at the components and what we need. So quickly, let's start with the adapters. PC2805, if you get one of them, you should pretty much be sorted. In fact, get two of them, then you can do the front and the back. Um, Alpine speakers, it always amazes me how tiny a four inch speaker actually is in the palm of your hand. But they're quite mighty little beasts. They weigh quite a substantial amount and you certainly wouldn't want to be hit on the head with one of them. They are pretty chunky little monkeys. So hopefully they'll be pretty good, especially for the budget. And then what I'm pretty amazed with are these. So super poor these mounts. So we've got a dash mount, which is these top box which trying to open the box with one hand is difficult, but here it is. And they're 3D printed, and I don't know where you get his cardboard boxes done, but the cardboard boxes are also a thing of wonder. It seems a shame they're just packaging, but everything fits perfectly in here. Um, the mounting screws, these are slightly deeper for the Alpine speakers, and super poorly, if you order them, he actually tells you this beforehand, and you can opt, opt for the slightly longer screws versus shallower screws. And he's got a really, really good descriptions of how to mount things on top. So yeah, it looks great. It's like a really engineered solution. And then these are the, uh, the rears. So you'll note that they are different front and rear. You can't use the same one front and rear. But a set of these are 50 quid, give or take, I think, if I remember rightly. Um, and if you consider otherwise, you're gonna be doing quite a lot of manual work. You're gonna need a glue gun and all the other bits and pieces. I kind of figure it's value for money. So yeah, let, let, let's give these a go. So the speakers, they're mounted in on little Torx T20s. If I look through the screen, you can see the two there on the front speaker. And then in the rear, maybe if I poke myself in there, through the CI, you can see the two little Torx on that too. So those two 20s, plus a little plastic clip which sits at the at the front, I think the little plastic clip is sort of, or metal clip I should say, spring clip there, undo those two, pull out the speaker, release the spring clip as you pull in it, and then there'll just be the plug for the speaker wires, unplug it, 
and I've removed the speaker, so it should be a doddle. I'm gonna do the back first, because this is my acrobatic bit. Get it out of the way first, then I'll do the front. Right then, let's see if we can do this. Oh my God. Yeah, definitely easier without bucket seats and a roll cage. There we go, look, there we go. I might use the screw to help me lever this out. There we go, that's a job and a half. Right, where's the lead on the back? You're kidding me, that one wasn't even bloody plugged in. No wonder the sound's crap in the car. Doof, look at that. I bet I didn't plug it back in when I uh, put the roll cage in. What a twat. Right, I won't video the other side. You don't need to see this again, do you? Let's be honest. I'll get it done though, I'll get it done. Okay, we are back inside with both speakers. Both of my rear speakers were indeed unplugged, but take it from me, even when they're plugged in, it still sounds a bit ropey. So let's have a quick look what we need to do. We've got a tweeter, we've got the main woofer. Obviously that's the magnet, which I shouldn't just put my screwdriver on to get stuck. Two screws at the back, one at the front. So I'm just gonna start I'm gonna start by getting the right screwdriver for that Phillips, it's not a bloody posy, is it? So I'll be back, give me a minute. Right, I've got my dinky little Phillips. Let's get him out. So one. Easy enough, two. Might be worth saying that I, I've got the sound package in my car. Um, sounds like shit package, but it is the sound package. So that gives me the four speakers, two woofers in the door for debase and uh, an amplifier at the front. Um, I've already switched out the head unit for a Continental, which if you follow the channel, you probably know that. If you don't follow the channel, maybe you should. I think it's all right, the channel, and you might get some hints and tips from it. And subscribe, go on, help my numbers. All right, how do I get the tweeter out? That's the next challenge. There's a little, capacitor type affair here, slot you out, and I need to slot out the tweeter. It looks like it's glued in. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant Porsche. Make it easy to swap things when you glue things in, don't you? It's just that glue. There's bits of glue all around the edge. One, two, three. Three, three for fun, three's a charm. That's how they glue that in. Right, well, that's, that's a speaker out. <sighs> then we have the mount. The mount. Left, right, right, right. So if we follow Super Paulie's little uh, instructions, what have we got? We've got two at the back, one at the front. Right, I'm looking at this all stupidly because that's the dash one. No wonder that wasn't making any sense. Switch reverse, here we go. Right, now we got the rear, now we're talking. Now we're talking, right. Uh, just in case there's any logic that the right is on the right, I'm gonna take the right hand side one. So then we have this bit over here, that bit over there. And it should just clip over the grill, which it seems to be doing. Okay, okay. Like it, I like it super boring. I like it so far. This thing goes in here. Screw it in. Okay, this one at the back. I mean, come on, if you're gonna cut up speakers, this is easy. This is really easy. <laughs> Please hold, pedal. Right, three screws are in. Okie dokie, it's easy. And then we get our speaker in. Well, I mean, 
that's not too troublesome, is it? We're in. Right then. Make sure they're just sort of tightened down a bit. The good thing I like about this is they're not gonna fall out. I always worry if you glue something, it's just gonna fall apart. But that's that on. And then last but not least, we'll get the lead. Hopefully they've got a nice tight friction fit, although they might have to clamp them a bit down a bit. But I reckon these are gonna be all right. They're brand new, so they should be. There we go, yes, nice. Actually, that way, that way's better. There we go, nice, and then on you go. Was a little bit tighter. Rah, you're home. Brilliant. That's a speaker done. I mean, didn't take too long, did it? And by the power of editing, <gasps> And just like that, that's two done. So, time to get them back in the car. See if they go in without any issue. I'm sure they will. Back in the car. For full disclosure, I got back in the car and I realized actually I'd mounted these upside down for when they went in. And because of my OCD, I've uh, switched them. I couldn't live with myself to put them in upside down in there. To be honest, it won't make any difference whatsoever, but it just means I'll be happy in myself. Right, I'm going to pop it back in. I won't video this bit because I think you've seen enough of my little baldy head trying to squeeze through here. And uh, plug them up, hey? Plug it in, plug it in, that plugs into that. And then screw it back in and uh, maybe have a little quick listen, see if it's made an immediate difference. Right, two speakers are in the back. I'm going to switch on the stereo. It's not really scientific, this, because I'm probably going to have two completely different songs playing when I try it, but uh, back on Radio 1. Well, so far, results are positive. So let's get these unscrewed. So two screws and two screws, they pop out exactly the same as the rear. So I'm not gonna video it, but under this one, which is behind the driver's side, I believe, is the infamous plastic cowling that protects some um, wiring and that's why you can't fit deep speakers in the front so let's see how we get on so having just taken out the passenger side one first I can tell you the screw at the front by the windscreen is a pig because you've got no height in between the windscreen and the screw itself so improvised got the little bit put it in my spanner like that and that's how I started it off just because I can get really really low underneath the screen once you've loosened it you can then just unwind it by hand but that was my little solution to uh, have a low profile torque bit in there right, let's get this one out right i've got both the speakers out and this is a plastic shroud everyone talks about but over in that over in that back corner to the left hand side of the screen top left you've got that plastic shroud covering up all the cabling so that is what everybody is concerned about hitting uh, when they're trying to put the speaker in. I'd imagine this cable doesn't help either, does it? The actual speaker cable itself, you want to keep that away because if it was on top of it, you'd have loads of trouble. So you've got to make sure you're routing your cabling on this side of that shroud to give you the full depth. But let's mount the speakers up. Same same principles apply. Uh, mount them to the, the front adapters of Super Paulie's mounting kit, and away we go. We can get these in too. Boom. What have we got? What have we got? Right hand side, right hand side. It amazes me that these are such a different design to the rears. You think it probably isn't cost effective to make them so different, but I guess they had to. You can tell that the speakers are way more angled on the, on the front, so they've clearly gone to some effort to make it sound nice. And more tweeters. I guess because I've got this sound package, I've got more tweeters that I know what to do with. It's quite nice having separate components in the car, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, nevertheless, they're getting swapped. Right. And now I know that they can just be levered out of the glue, making my life a lot easier. The other thing I would note is that when I've seen other people removing speakers, they're Nokias. These aren't, they're called Haze. Haze speakers. Oh, and it's a completely different color. 
Well, what do you know? What do you know? Right, uh, right hand side. So we've got right hand side. Follow, follow Super Paulie's instructions. Match up your right hand side with your right hand side. Nice and straightforward. That goes over the post. Oh, drop my clip. Put my clip back on. Go over the post. Like that. Oh, right, that's fiddly. So that goes over there. What stops that from falling over here? Not a lot. Nothing stops it falling off, it's just friction. Right, that goes on there. Then the speaker. I'm going to unbox my speakers. That's going to take a bit of time. Sorry. Actually, before I put the speaker on, I should follow the instructions properly, shouldn't I? Right, this. Come on, goes on here first. Well, I don't know if I push that all the way down, have I? Oh, I haven't. There we go, there we go. So that didn't clip in immediately for me. So make sure you put the right amount of pressure to clip it in. And we've got the two screws. All my screws are getting wildly magnetized as they go right up to the speaker. These little screws are giving me little buggers. Right, one. There's no reflection on this kit, by the way. These are the little screws you've got to put back in that part, the original speakers, speaker grills, I should say, speaker covers, speaker mounts. Speaker, that's the word I'm looking for, speaker mount. Right, and then this little cap. A little block goes on there, okay. This is that. Ah, right, I've not put the uh, debris on. Right, so that, like that, that over the top. And that then actually screws into the metal. That's the obvious answer as to what holds the metal on. It's not just a friction fit, it actually screws into it. Okay. Right. And that's my speaker up onto there. Right, I'll screw this on. Hard bit's done. And I'll get the wiring on by the magic of editing again. <laughs> Ta-da! Um, right, they're both on. What I did do, actually, I mounted the terminals so they're facing the tweeter because of that plastic grill i was thinking there's going to be a lot more space inside the depth of that mount if i if i, if I mount on this side because the the part of plastic that plastic shroud that we're worried about covers this back corner of the speaker so by having the terminals as far away from that as possible i'm hoping i've been smart here and i've given myself more room so right let's try and get them back in the car and get that damn annoying torque screw by the windscreen in too let's go Okay, it's it's all back in and it sounds brilliant. I'm, you know, no word of a lie. I've got more bass than I know what to do with, if I'm honest. For a cheap upgrade, this is bob on. I, I'm really impressed. The woofers in the door seem to be working better with these speakers. I don't know why, and I don't know if there's any science behind that, but it, it's, it's like a completely new stereo. It's made, well, it sort of is a new stereo, but it, it, it's it's amazingly better um a huge step up one thing i would know because i heard somebody mention this before when you look at the speaker grills on the dash if you notice that the corner edge is is poking up just check you've got the left and the right the right way around when i first put these in i tried to put the right hand speaker over on the left there and the corner of the speaker grill this bit over here that was poking up it was a kind of like few mil up off the dash, I was like, oh, what's it? What's it? And I couldn't work out what it was like um, interfering with, but it's purely because I got the left and the right hand one switched around the wrong way. But when they're in the right way around, they fit perfectly. So super poorly, thumbs up. He didn't know I was making this video, but they're, they're, he didn't even know I bought them, I guess. I was just one of his regular punters, but they're brilliant. If you want some easy, quick installation speakers for want of a better marketing message, buy these one i think they're great um thanks for watching hopefully that's helpful hopefully it's helped someone if you like the videos please subscribe please like the video and check out the rest of the content on the channel thanks a lot guys bye bye